can be seated if you can. Come on, give the Lord a clap. For what an incredible time. Where'd Miss West go? What? I want you to know what an incredible, ooh, the choir just on fire this morning. Come on. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Miss West, for that incredible, incredible experience. That would just, you know, have you ever been, I mean, just in the worship experience, through the music portion of the worship experience, and you just get, I mean, you just get, sometimes you can't do anything but just blow. You know what I'm talking about? Just shh. Come on, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's all you can do. I mean, you know it's going to be a good day when you already wore out before you come preach. Oh, I still got a little bit in me, though. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the book of Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, as we look at a familiar passage in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, as we continue on in our sermon series entitled Exploring the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, not only are we on an exploration of the Bible, but here's what I want you to understand. Not, we're on a journey, but we're on a journey, listen, to examine the greatest phenomena that has ever taken place in human history. I want you to know that we're on a journey. We are making and setting our sights toward the greatest event that's ever taken place in human history. What I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen, is when God left the splendor and the majesty of heaven being born into his own creation for one purpose, and that is to save mankind from their sin. You know what I'm talking about this morning? We are setting our sights on John chapter 1, verse 14, where it said, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Praise the Lord as we make our journey. Exploring the Bible, but yet making headway toward the greatest event in human history. That event known as Christmas. I know that some of you say, well, what about Easter, Pastor? What about Easter when Jesus got up from the dead? Well, you know without the resurrection, there'd be no salvation. But you want me to tell you what I know this morning? Without Christmas, there'd be no Easter. I say without Christmas, there'd be no Easter. Praise God that he made the decision to do what only he could do himself. We're thinking about and setting our sights toward Christmas. And some of you are thinking, well, Pastor, it's a little bit early for Christmas, isn't it? Huh? Well, it's November now. I said it's November now. Uh, some of y'all think we just trick-or-treated last night. Yeah, but that was last night. Today's today. We're going to set our sights toward the manger. Many reasons why we're doing that. Can I give you a particular reason why we're doing it this morning? We're setting our sights because Christmas is, is the most important uh, and, and one of my favorite subjects. But here's the real reason why we're setting it toward Christmas. You know, if we could just get to, look at me when I say this. If we could just get to Christmas, you know what's around the corner? New Year's. Come on. <laughs> if we could just get to Christmas, right around the corner, going to be the freshness of a brand new year. Come on, 2021. So we'll this morning set our sights. We'll make our way to the manger and this series within a series that I've entitled Countdown to New Year's. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6 and 7, as we give thought this morning to a sermon that I've entitled Wonderful Benefits. Wonderful Benefits. Benefits. Now, while you're turning to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7, when we think about benefits, first of all, I want, I want you to know the, the definition, the technical definition of benefit is something that produces uh, good or, or something that produces helpful results, something that promotes well-being. I've kind of redefined that, if you will, and put it in Freeman translation. I put it in a synopsis, if you will, and I believe that benefits, I like to call them those extras, all right, those, those add-ons to, 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 to something, that the, the, those add-ons that literally come and sweeten the deal, those, those add-ons to what is the base or the normal. Does that make sense? So I, I like to call them those extras that come along and sweeten the deal. Most of the time when we think about benefits, we're thinking about uh, the, uh, 
probably in your mind, you probably went to employment. Is that where some of your minds went? You got to think, when we think about benefits, we always got to thinking about our jobs and those benefits, those extras that come on top of the wage or the salary, those things that sweeten the deal, those things that keep us there, Brother Bob, those things that, 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 that add flavor on top of what is already the foundation, those extras. When you go and take a job or when you work at a job or you stay at a job, lots of times it's because of the benefits that you receive. Maybe they provide health insurance. Maybe they provide, and these are some of the things that you're looking at when you're going to look for a job. I mean, you're looking for these extras on top that add that layer of sweetness to the deal that's all ready. But you're looking for health insurance. Maybe you're looking for uh, that, what, what kind of vacation time you're going to get. You're looking at the benefits on top of the wage or salary, those extras that sweeten the deal. But can I tell you this, and here's where I want you to dial in. I want you to understand that we experience benefits in so many aspects of our life. We experience benefits in our physical life. We experience benefits in our employment life. We experience benefits in our financial life. But I want you to know, especially as we target this morning, I want to talk about the benefits that come into our spiritual life. Can I tell you that there are great benefits to our spiritual life? When a person comes to the fact when a person comes to understand the fact of what Jesus has done for all mankind, what we've set our sights on this morning, when a person comes to the realization that Jesus died for our sin, was buried on the third day, God raised him from the dead, when a person comes to the realization that, 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 that they're a sinner in need of a Savior, when a person comes to the understanding that we are slaves to sin until we're set free by the power of God and the power of the gospel that we so richly celebrated this morning, so richly sung about this morning. I want you to know when a person comes to the understanding and by faith they give their life to Jesus Christ, there are great benefits that accompany the Christian life. I wish I had time to preach them all this morning. But I want to hone in on just a couple of those benefits. Can, can I tell you this this morning? They're not just benefits. Look at me. Look at me. They're not just benefits. They're wonderful benefits. Isaiah chapter 9, beginning in verse 6, going down to verse 7. Stand, if you would, this morning for the reading of the Word of God. You know we're in the book of Isaiah traveling along to explore the Bible. We're, we're traveling along the Sunday school lesson. Some of you are looking and saying, Pastor, we're not in Sunday school. Well, the senior adults are, and you getting ready to be. Come on. We're just taking just a little break, giving the teachers a break, but we'll soon and very soon, we're going to be back to Sunday school. Soon and very soon, you're going to see a lot of normalcy return to Grace Baptist Church. That's why you probably ought to get your ticket to the Thanksgiving luncheon or you're going to be left out in the know. But here's, we're traveling Isaiah 700 years prior to Jesus being born. Here we find Isaiah in this particular passage bringing hope and help to a nation in distress. Now they're in distress by their own making, but nevertheless out of the grace and mercy of God, Isaiah comes preaching about an eternal king that's going to that, an eternal king that's going to sit on the throne forever and there'll be no end to his government and there he's going to be a perfect king. He's talking about Jesus and Jesus is the one who fulfilled more than 2000 years ago Jesus came just as God said he was through the prophet Isaiah. Hey, listen, if you don't get anything else, understand this, you can trust the word of God. If you don't get, you can trust the Word of God, friend. I want you to know that what God says He will do, come on, He will do. He said there'll be a, time, there'll be a coming King. And there's some wonderful attributes about this King. Prince of Peace, mighty God, we're getting ready to read about Him. But in particular, He said that this King who comes, be a wonderful counselor. What does it mean to have such a wonderful counselor? And really, what are the benefits of accepting this wonderful counselor into our lives? I'm glad you asked, because I'm getting ready to tell you. I'm going to give you two benefits today as we look at this passage of Scripture. Two benefits of accepting the wonderful counselor. 
beginning in verse 6 of Isaiah chapter 9. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful. His name will be called Counselor. His name will be called Mighty. His name will be called God. His name will be called Eternal. His name will be called Father. His name will be called Prince of Peace. His name will be the name that is written above every name that all the knees uh, and all tongues will confess to the glory of God that Jesus Christ is King. It is the only name given under heaven among men by which we can be saved. The name of Jesus There will be no increase. There will be no end to the increase of His government or of peace. I don't know about you, but that that sounds pretty good today. That we'll finally have a government that's perfect in rule and one that we can really count on and one that will usher in peace instead of chaos. On the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. And the zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Father, give us these benefits. And Father, if we've never accepted the benefits today, let us understand how marvelous it is to accept a wonderful counselor. But Father, for those of us who have accepted Are we living in those benefits? What good are benefits if we're not willing to live in them? (laughs) What good is taking a job with good benefits if you decline them? Or you reject them? What good is it to accept a wonderful counselor if we won't relish? Father, just bask in the benefits speak today move me out of the way and let somebody get saved today in Jesus name amen and amen you may be seated two benefits of accepting the wonderful counselor the first benefit we receive when we're willing to accept into our lives the wonderful the Counselor is the fact that when a person accepts Jesus, they receive incomprehensible intellect. Incomprehensible intellect. Look at verse 6. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Now here we find Isaiah, uh, the the prophet Isaiah, again, 700 years prior to it uh, coming to to place or, or coming into being, he's preaching, he's proclaiming, if you will, that a child is going to be born. But this is not going to be an ordinary child. Come on, I want you to listen to me now. This is not an ordinary child. The Bible says that this is an extraordinary child with extraordinary qualities or attributes. This isn't going to be no just normal child now. Now he's going to come in and be born normally, but he's not going to be a normal child. This is going to be the God child. This is going to be something incredible about this child. Are you listening to me this morning? But he says, as we think about it, he he gives him the attribute. Did y'all notice this attribute, Ronnie? Did you notice where it said, he said, this child is going to be wonderful. This child is going to be wonderful. Now, it's important that we examine that this morning because when we think about wonderful, y'all, we we, we get in our minds something that creates bliss, something that makes us happy. You know what I'm talking about. Like for all, yeah, you know, when you talk about something being wonderful, especially this time of year, and this really holds true for all the millennials, you know what they're thinking. You know what they're thinking, don't you? Something that's got to do with pumpkin spice. What is the deal with pumpkin spice? I mean, for crying out loud, we just all of a sudden come into an era where we love pumpkins, don't we? I mean, we used to hate pumpkins. We, I mean, we get them out one time a year and make pumpkin pie. We discriminated against pumpkin all these years. We only let it come out one time a year. But now we're just pumpkin spice and everything. Pumpkin spice and candles, 
pumpkin spice, and just coffee. I mean, why ruin coffee with pumpkin spice? Let that thing, man, you just can't, I mean, it's Folgers. Leave it alone. It don't need no help. Somebody ought to shout on that. It don't need no help. It's Folgers. It's good to the last drop. Oh, that's Maxwell House. It's good, too. Why are you going to put pumpkin spice in there? How did I get off on this, Don? I don't know how I got off, but it's, I'm glad that somebody needed it this morning. <laughs> but I mean, we're thinking about things that are wonderful, those things that create bliss, but that's not really exactly what the Bible talks about. See, when the Bible, when, when Isaiah uses the word wonderful, he's using the Hebrew word in the original language, Pele, and it literally translates extraordinary Hard to understand. Now, come on, follow me. Extra, this is what he's describing. This Christ child is coming. And can I tell you about it? This is how we know. I mean, this is how we can verify that Jesus is the one he's talking about because I don't know when the last time you've noticed, but Jesus is certainly extraordinary but hard to understand. Have y'all ever noticed how hard it is? How hard it is to understand? I mean, don't we serve, listen, I'm not being derogatory, I'm just repeating what he said about himself, but don't we serve such an odd God? There is nothing about God that coincides with our natural thinking, our natural way of doing things, does it? I mean, everything is contrary. I mean, as the world goes, it's completely contrary as to the, as to the Lord and the things of the Lord, even what the Lord calls us to do. I mean, it's, He's extraordinary, but He sure is hard to understand. I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. Have you ever read the Bible? Have you ever read the Bible? Have you not ever figured out that the Lord, I mean, it's strange. He said, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts, declares the Lord. He's an odd God. Nothing resonates in the limited understanding and the finite capacity of our human, limited human experience. We can't comprehend the Lord. He's just out there. He's extraordinary and He's hard to understand. All the things of the Lord. I mean, I was thinking about this and thinking about various passages of Scripture in the Bible. I, I went over to James chapter 1 verse 2. I mean, think about how odd it is what God tells us to do and how He tells us to do it. Have you, James chapter 1 verse 2, it says, consider all Consider it all joy, brethren. Now, this is what the Lord tells us about our life. Are you listening? Consider it all joy, brethren, when you encounter various trials. Consider it all joy. When's the last thing? Now, naturally thinking, this is why it cuts cross grain to who we naturally are. This is why you've got to be supernaturally changed and different in order to be able to understand and accept the things of God. But naturally speaking, that's not where... When's the last time you've been so fired up when the bottom came out of your life? Hey! When's the last time when the bottom came out that you just got fired up about it? I mean, when you got that letter from the doctor, when you got that letter from the bank, and you just shouted for joy. Praise the Lord, I'm getting foreclosed on. Hallelujah! When's the, last, when's the last time? Doctor said, you're going you're gonna to have to come up in here for surgery. Got something going. When's the last time you just, woo! Come on, give me that, ga give me that Novocaine now. You know what I mean? When's the, that's just not how we naturally think. But all throughout the Bible, it's like this. I think about the greatest sermon, John. The greatest sermon ever preached in human history. Back, Sermon on the Mount. Do you know how odd that sermon was? Y'all think mine are odd. And y'all think mine are long? That one was two chapters. I just preached two verses. That was two chapters. Can you imagine how long mine would be if I preached two chapters? Y'all missed the catfish house. That's why we start so early over here. <laughs> I'm getting ready to change too. <laughs> All right, listen, 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 listen. Look at me. Think about that sermon. You know what Jesus said? He said these things. This is how he wants us to operate our life. You know what he said? Blessed, blessed are you. Happy, that word blessed, happy. Happy are you when people insult you 
and, and they say and persecute you and falsely say evil things against you. Now think about how weird that is. That's not at all what the word... I mean, when's the last time you've been happy when people insulted you? I mean, when's the last time you got fired up? I was thinking about this. My mind just traveled back, David, to that political sermon series that I preached not that long ago. Do you know not everybody liked that? <laughs> Did you know that not everybody liked that? I mean, it's amazing when you get to preach in politics. You really... I mean... <laughs> But I mean, I, I did, I, I, I mean, I, and, and listen, through that series, not everybody liked it. I got a lot of, I, I got a lot of fan mail <laughs> from all around, by the way. It was amazing. Got a few phone calls and things like that. And you know, I mean, I know like in my mind when they called and I was listening, I know what was being translated in my heart is they were telling me what a wonderful pastor I am. <laughs> It just wasn't coming across that way at first. But you know, I mean, that's what they were telling me, Scott, just what a wonderful pastor I was. I know that deep down in, in their heart, Rob, that's exactly what that, I, I just know that. But you know, I was thinking, and you know naturally, in, in, your, in, in your natural state of mind, Okay, you, you, you don't naturally go to these things. This is not how we naturally tend to respond. Jesus said when they're insulting you and calling you all kinds of things as a result of, of you standing for Him, when they start telling all these derogatory things, you know, and using this colorful, colorful language. Well, you know, I mean, you naturally don't, I mean, you're not happy about it. Not naturally, Right? In my mind, I'm thinking, I'm on the phone, Barry, and I'm thinking, listen, listen and this is the church people. I'm thinking, hey, hang, hang on. This is what I want to do. Hang on just a minute. Let me go check your tithing record because I ain't listening to all this on credit. I can guarantee you that. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't. I, I don't do no credit up in here. That's funny. I don't care who you are. I, <laughs> It's true, though. You know, I mean, that's why I don't get in the flesh, Wesley. I try to stay up here in the spiritual, because I mean, and that's why I don't go check your tithing record. I would never take your calls. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and here, here, here. But I mean, that's not where we naturally go to respond, is it? When's the last time you've been fired up when somebody called you an idiot? I don't know. I mean, but. This is what Jesus said over in that same sermon. He said stuff like, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And what, is, what is that? It's not how the world thinks about things, is it? That's not how we typically operate in the, in, in, in the human standard. But here's the thing. This is, this is what's so wonderful about Jesus is because this is his personality. This is his character. This is his characteristics. This is his attributes. And then can I tell you the most wonderful part? Don't miss this now. Can I tell you the most wonderful part of this is the fact that when a person gets saved, he begins to transfer these same qualities and these same characteristics, these same attributes to the person who's willing to receive them. Oh, this is what, you know what that means? This means that not only is he wonderful, but when you get saved, you get moved into the realm and the category of wonderful, extraordinary, and hard to understand. This is why the world can't figure the church out. This is why the world has so much problem with the church. They can't figure us out. You know why? Because we strange. Some stranger than others. But I mean, we're strange. We just don't operate like the rest of the world. I mean, it's just, a, I mean, I mean it's a, when, when we don't respond like the rest of the world. Think about this 2020. Have y'all noticed it's been kind of an off year? It's been kind of an off year. But think about how the church has responded in, in throughout this pandemic. How the rest of the world is crippled with fear. Hey, how the rest of the world is crippled with fear. And, and, and they've bought into the fear hysteria. But you have just placed and chosen to place your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Friend, we know no matter how it ends, it's all going to be okay. That's the beautiful part of it. We just respond so... Hey, go ahead. 
You know what I was telling somebody the other day? Listen, if I'm going to die of the COVID, do you know where I want to get it? Right up here in church singing hymns. Amen. We'll come up here and do that amen thing again. And you know, did you hear that choir? You know they was projecting some spittle. <laughs> now listen, look at me here. Look at me. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to make light because we are in a serious, serious time. I don't want to make light of this. We're in a serious time. And the coronavirus is a real virus that's really killing people. It's not exactly what you see on TV. But it's really uh, uh, it's something that we have to be careful for. But ladies and gentlemen, being cautious and careful doesn't constitute living in fear. We serve the living Lord Jesus Christ. We've handled things so much differently. I think about this during the coronavirus and pandemic and, and God's people and how faith. Hey, have you noticed that the world's out here just trying to get all they can, can all they make, and sit on the can? I mean, that's just the, the world's mentality, especially during COVID. Everybody worried about whether or not what the next paycheck. But I think about how the church has responded. Do you know that this is one? Hey, listen to me. This is one of the greatest giving gears. While the world's trying to make all they can, you are trying to give all you can. I've never seen anything like it. You've been so faithful. We've been able to minister at such a time and, and put the glorious gospel on display because you've been so faithful and abundantly faithful above and beyond the call of duty. For crying out loud, we bought a piece of property over there that people get saved on every way. That's strange. It's strange. It's one the world Alan can't figure the church out. They don't understand why we're so happy all the time. They don't understand why, why, why at work, when everything's going wrong. Have y'all ever been to work and people are having bad days? Don't answer that. But when the boss is not doing what he ought to do, I mean, and, and, and things are just going awry, but have you ever noticed how the church, the people at church, the people of God, how, how different they are? Because, and everybody, and then everybody's, they, they don't understand you. They take the focus off the boss, or they take the focus off the problem, start focusing on you. Like, what's wrong with you? Why don't you get in this hot bed of hot mess? Why don't you get in here and start running down the boss with us? And you over there just working hardly as, as for the Lord. Not for men, because you know, you done figured out Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, and no matter what's going on, you just getting after it with everything you got, everything around you is coming down, but you just got a smile on your face and a song in your heart, and you just getting after it. Boy, all your co-workers think there's something wrong with you. You know why? Because there is. You've been changed. You're now no longer like the world. You've now been transitioned and transformed to be wonderful. Extraordinary. Hard to understand. This is one of the attributes of God. But this is one of the attributes or the benefits of being a child of God because He begins to pass that on to you. As a child of God, once we get saved... The Holy Spirit of God, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, comes and takes up residence in our life. It begins to change us from the inside out, molding us into the image of the one who has created us. The one who the Bible calls a wonderful counselor. Second benefit. Second and final benefit we receive when we're willing to accept into our lives the wonderful, the counselor, is the fact that when a person accepts Jesus, they receive incomparable instruction. Incomparable instruction for a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful, and his name will be called Counselor, can I tell you that the Lord is smart? I, can I tell you, now stay with me, I'm almost done. I only have two points today, so you know this thing's only going to be another 10, 45 minutes. 
The Lord is smart. He's so smart. He has everything already. For, he's sovereign over everything. He's so smart. He's a wonderful counselor. But you know, it takes us a long time to figure that out, doesn't it? Have y'all ever noticed that it takes us a long time? And some never figure it out. As a matter of fact, if I got honest about it, most people never figure out how, how smart the Lord is. We treat the Lord just like our teenagers treat us. We just don't. But y'all know what I'm talking about. I mean, you do realize. Look at me, parents and grandparents with teenagers. Not really grandparents, but look, te- parents with teenagers. You understand, like, there's two things that your kids are never going to think about you, right? There's two things that your teenagers are never going to think about you. One, that you're cool. And two, that you have a clue. Now, I know you're living in denial, and I know you want to be cool. That's why you went over there to the, the lucky store and got them skinny jeans. But you do realize they don't make you any cool, and your kids really don't think you're any cooler wearing those. Can I give you a word about that? Just because they make things in your size don't mean you ought to buy them. That was a good word for somebody. Just because they make them in your size don't mean you ought to purchase them. And certainly don't mean you ought to wear them. If you've got to get skinny jeans and they got 31 belt loops, it's probably pointless. <laughs> let me move on. I don't, let me. Here, listen to me. But isn't that what we do? We treat the Lord just like our teenagers treat us. Like, like he doesn't have a clue. And, and, and the reality is we never get over that. We live our lives, when you really think about it, we live our lives so independently of the Lord. When he, the Bible says, is the wonderful counselor. He's the, he's the one who knows it all and is willing to guide you into all things. We're not listening this morning. He will tell you, do you realize the benefit of receiving Jesus? The benefit of receiving Jesus is the fact that when you receive Jesus Christ, you never have to make another mistake again in your life. I'm not saying you won't. I'm saying you don't have to. If you do, it's because you chose to. It's because you chose to. All the time we say, well, no, the devil made me. We get that Flip Wilson attitude. The devil made me do it. No, friend. The devil ain't got no power on a child of God. More than overcomers we are. But He's given you the ability, literally residing inside of you, guiding you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 724. He's placed guidance in your life, and He'll tell you every move to make, everything to do, everything not to do. He'll wrap it all in there, and you never have to make another mistake. And we may choose to. And we do. But one of the main reasons is because we treat God like the teenagers. We just don't think He knows anything. We know better than He does. That's what we do, Mr. Mike, isn't it? We just go and do things because we know better than the Lord. We'll go do it, and then we'll expect Him to clean up the mess. When He's inviting you, He's going to give you everything that you ever need, guide you every step along the way. Tell you everything to do. He is a wonderful, extraordinary, hard to understand, but He is a counselor, meaning that He can guide and direct you in a perfect manner. This is one of the greatest benefits and attributes of God, but one of the greatest benefits He bestows upon those of us who accept God. Can you imagine a built-in GPS system for your life? All you have to do is listen. Listen through those ways that He speaks to us. And I've given you these time and time again. He speaks to us through the Holy Spirit of God living inside of us. He speaks to us through our prayer life. He speaks to us through His Word. He speaks to us in the corporate uh, worship event, but publicly, uh, or the public proclamation, the teaching and preaching of His Word. There's things God would do at church. He'll tell you at church. He ain't going to tell you at home. 
I mean, it's so much. He's constantly in tune and communicating with us, guiding us on everything that we need to do. I've told you time and time again, this Bible right here. Got all the answers to life's questions. But the problem is he's given us a benefit that we don't protect of. We never have to do it on our own. Have you ever thought about how wonderful that is? We don't have to do this thing on our own. He just guides us, Frank. Every step of the way. The greatest benefit. And there's a lot of them. There's so many benefits with giving your heart to Christ, giving your heart to the wonderful counselor. I wish I had time this morning to tell you about that reservation in heaven that you received. Praise the Lord. When you accept the wonderful counselor, you don't have to go to hell. Isn't that a good benefit? You don't have to spend eternity in hell separated from God. I wish I had time to tell you about the, 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 all the other benefits, but I just came this morning. I stopped by this morning to tell you about two wonderful benefits and the fact that your name can be called wonderful because you take on the name and the characteristics of the wonderful counselor and the fact that the greatest benefit is God living inside of us, guiding us every moment of every day. So here's what I'm going to ask you in closing. Is there a reason this morning why you wouldn't partake of the benefits offered to you? Offered to you, given to you, simply by your acceptance of the wonderful counselor. I wonder today if you want something different for your life today. I wonder today if you're gathered in this place, if you've never accepted Jesus, just on the testimony of his word, the testimony of these two benefits. And look at me, they're just on the surface Again, the greatest benefit is salvation. The fact that He'll clean you up and set you free. Give you a brand new heart and a brand new start in life. Look at me. Look at me for those of you in this place. And even those watching by way of broadcast today. Have you ever thought, boy, if I could go back and redo my life. If I could go back and live my life. Have you ever said this before? Well, if I go back and relive my life. I do X, Y, and Z differently. Have you ever said that before? Can I tell you, you want me to tell you a benefit? I'm slipping this in on you. But you know what the benefit is? You get to do that. You, I mean, literally, you get a fresh, clean slate. The psalmist says it like this, that our sins are cast as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered against the sin anymore. Fresh start fresh heart. Literally, you get to redo life and start fresh. Jesus called it in John chapter 3 when he was talking to Nicodemus. He called it being born again. You get to you get a rebirth, a restart. I wonder if that sounds good to you this morning. I wonder if that sounds good to you this morning. Mindset. <laughs> he ushers out all this thinking, thinking, thinking like the world does out here. The world's crazy. And I'm not being derogatory, I'm just saying that I mean, we can't expect it to be any other way. It's just pandemonium and chaos. Just division and hatred, just all kind of. Isaiah says, there's going to be a king coming, <laughs> the prince of peace. Doesn't that sound good? You know what the benefit is of Christian life? Peace. 
peace that surpasses all understanding. Peace, not as the world gives, Jesus said, but as I give. I wonder if you want something different for your life and what would keep you from accepting Jesus today? Then I think about those of us in the room who've accepted Jesus. You know what I said just a few minutes ago, Brother Bob, and this, the Lord just laid that on my heart. I think I started out by saying it in my prayer. But what good are benefits if we don't partake of them? If that job gives you health insurance, and that may be, a, maybe your spouse works and you don't need health insurance, but they offer health insurance and you're like, no thanks, I'll take my chances. Well, you know what that is? Dumb. What if they offer retirement? No thanks, I've already got that built in through the government. Good luck with that. What good are benefits? We're going to give you two weeks vacation. No thanks, I'm going to work every day. It's no good if you don't partake of them. But here's the thing, same thing in the Christian life. Why wouldn't you want that transformed thinking? And why, hey, why wouldn't you want that incomparable instruction for your life, Him guiding you every day? All you got to do is get up, check in with headquarters. He'll tell you exactly what to do. Doesn't that sound better than what you've been doing? Doesn't that sound better than what you've been doing? It's just not worked, has it? Jesus came today to tell you the Holy Spirit of God has resonated in His Word to tell you, you don't have to do it that way anymore. Stop it! He said, just follow me and listen to me, child. I'll guide you. I am the wonderful counselor. That's what He's telling you. You know what we said in the beginning? It's like with Jacob. They'd be the first day in the rest of your life. What is it you need to do today in order to jumpstart that? What's he laid on your heart? You've never been saved? In just a moment, when I say amen, we're going to have encouragers. Our pastors are going to be down front. Our deacons are going to be down front. Encouragers are going to be down front. And we're going to help you make that decision if you've never been saved. The Bible says all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So guess what? If you're here today, you're a candidate. You're a candidate for salvation. He's willing. You say, Pastor, there's no way I could be saved today. Friend, I want you to know something. If you're breathing, you can be saved. I don't care what you've done in your life. Maybe you've been saved and never been baptized. And he's saying, get in on this thing. I've saved you, but you, you never even told any, anybody what team you're playing for. Get up there and put the uniform on. Some of you need a church home to serve in. It's time to get busy. I'm about over 2020 going into 2021. And you know what we're going to do? We're going to get out here in this community and reach people for Jesus. That's what we're going to do. It's going to take all of you doing it. So you got to get busy serving. All of this. Maybe there's some things in your life that you need to get out, some things in your life you need to get in, whatever. I tell you what, how about as the Lord speaks, you do whatever He says. We'll be here to help, but you just do whatever He says. Father, whatever that looks like, whatever it means, you guide us now. You're a wonderful counselor. In Jesus' name, amen.